Hello guys, my name is Jaydeep Pawar. Today we will be discussing the question number 48 and 49 of gate 2010 of subject COA, Computer Organization and Architecture. Even though you may find various solutions on the internet, but those solutions may not cover the proper concept. Even the answer for the question number 49, the options supplied by the gate were invalid. Let's discuss how and why. So the data given is as follow. A computer system has an L1 and L2 cache an L2 cache and a main memory unit connected as shown the block size in L1 cache is the 4 words the block size in L2 cache is the 16 words the memory access times are 2 nanosecond, 20 nanosecond and 200 nanosecond for L1, L2 and main memory unit respectively so as we can see we have written all the data that the block size is 4 and memory access time is 2 nanosecond here the block size is 16 words and the main memory access time is 20 nanosecond here also we are assuming that the block size has to be 16 word because whenever we bring data into the from main memory to L2 cache it has to be in terms of a blocks and the main memory access time is 200 nanosecond and at a time we can transfer the 4 words so let's see question number 48 which says there is a miss in L1 cache and a hit in L2 cache a block is transferred from L2 cache to L1 cache what is the time transfer for this transfer so uh, let's see with respect to the what CPU things. The CPU will uh, ask for the block A, means the word which is contained in the block A, as then it will search into the L1 cache, there will be miss in L1. Now we will go to the L2 cache. Here there is a hit because the L2 cache contains the word which is there in the block A. Now do note that here the block size is 16 and here the block size is 4. So with respect to L1 cache, the four words are contained in block A, whereas with respect to the L2 cache, the all those words, 16 words will form a single block. So we'll have to bring these four words in L1 cache. So first CPU will go into the L1 cache, will search for the uh, contents of words in block A. It will find that block A itself is not present. So we will go to the L2. The access time for L2 is a 20 nanosecond. Here we will perform the read for contents of a words in block A. So for that 20 nanosecond is the time incurred. Now that block will be transferred into the L1 cache. And to access the L1 cache for the purpose of writing the contents of block A, we will take another 2 nanosecond. So here, let's suppose that A maps to the position where X were previously mapped. So, as question asks about just the transfer from L2 cache to L1 cache, the overall time incurred is 22 nanoseconds. Now, we will move towards a more trickier one. Here is the question number 49. Now, do note that in question number 49, we are assuming the principle of memory inclusion, which says that whichever the data present in the lower cache has to be there into the higher cache. So, if a word is present in L1 cache, it has to be there in L2 cache and main memory. By keeping this concept in mind, if suppose the CPU tries to access the uh, words which are present in the block E. Now, when CPU comes into the L1 cache, it will find that the block, the content of a block E are absent in the L1 cache. Now it will go to the L2. Also, the contents are absent into the L2 cache. So finally, we will have to move towards the main memory. As main memory contains all the data, here are the block which contains word E, F, G, H. Now, we will have to transfer all those words from main memory to L2. Now, as the question says, we can transfer only 4 words at a time and the block size here is 16 for both main memory and L2 cache. That means we will have to repeat this procedure 4 times. The question also says, the main memory access time is 200 nanosecond. So, we will incur a total time of 200 into 4 nanosecond for main memory read as we will have to read all those 16 words and at a time we can only read 4 words. So, 16 by 4, it gives 4. So, 4 times we will have to access the main memory for read operation purpose. Now, after reading the content, we will have to write that into the L2 cache. And as the in question, given in a question, the main memory access time is 20 nanosecond for L2 cache. So, all the four times L2 cache will be accessed for the purpose of writing the contents EFGH. Now, in worst case scenario, it may happen that EFGH will map to the position where ABCD have been mapped. So, in that case, we will have to wipe out the 
a b c d and instead of that we will write down e f g and h so the total time incurred up till now is 200 into 4 for main memory read operation 20 in the 20 into 4 for the writing purpose into l2 cache now the contents of l2 cache will have to move to the l1 cache because if you wants to access the word which is in the block e block e in the sense with respect to l1 cache as its block size is 4 and block size of l2 is the 16 words so now here we have assumed that the principle of inclusion has to be followed but as we can notice here that the contents of l1 cache are abcd and those content is not no more present into the l2 cache because unfortunate mapping of efgh block to the position of abcd and we have wiped out the abcd and written the efgh so now l1 violates the principle of inclusion inclusion memory inclusion so in this case we will have to perform the read operation from l2 cache for all those four blocks with respect to l1 again so for the first time we will have to read those and as we know l2 cache to l1 cache has a data burst of the four words and here here one block of uh, l1 is of four words and we will have to read all the data efgs because the, it violates the principle of memory inclusion so we will have to read efgh of a total 16 words and at a time we can transfer 4 words so again 16 by 4 4 times we will have to read the l2 cache so 4 times we will have to read the l2 cache and we will transfer content one by one so first time we will read e written over here then f then g and then h so we will read the l2 cache 4 times and access 4 times L1 cache for the purpose of writing EFGH which incurred total cost of 8 nanosecond because as we know the memory access time is 2 nanosecond for the L1 cache hence by considering or keeping in this mind that the inclusion principle is being assumed over here though overall access time is 968 nanosecond now we just mentioned that we are assuming the principle of inclusion if we doesn't assume the principle of inclusion then there is another situation we may come up with a different answer uh, do note that this option is not there in all the four options provided by the gate but the 902 nanosecond answer is over there so let's see how it can be there so if we assume that no inclusion is there then in that case also we will have to go to the main memory and access those 16 words because it's been written in the question itself that the data is not in L1 nor in L2 so in general as we have seen previously 200 into 4 for reading those 16 words from main memory and for writing those into L2 we will take another 20 for each access and we will totally take 4 access because in each access we are transferring the 4 words so if we have uh, bring, brought those EFGH over here now here no inclusion principle needs to be satisfied so the content would have been the ABCD over here let's say this was our original content abcd now we have brought the efgh but as no inclusion says we don't need to uh, have a, a restriction that data in l1 has to be there in l2 so we will just perform the read operation for the block e with respect to l1 itself we will move a we will write e just one access is required for reading the content from l2 and just one access is required for writing that data into the l1 cache and here the time occurred will be the 902 nanosecond so as we saw that there are two methods for deriving the answer one which includes the principle of inclusion which gives the answer 968 and the other without inclusion gives the answer 902 but as we all know the inclusion principle most of the time is being followed in the serial connection of the data access via memories in a serial hierarchy so by keeping in that mind we also use uh, write back or write through policies and those are implemented for the purpose of maintaining the memory inclusion property so emphasizing on this inclusion property we think that the 968 is a more appropriate answer as it follows all the appropriate concepts which needs to be applied and this may be uh, thought of as a, another approach which doesn't include the inclusion property and may not be appreciated that much because as in general inclusion property is being always satisfied so see this question it's a very beautiful question and the trickier one at the end i would like to say those three magical words 
लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब थैंक यू